It's time to put your health in your own hands. Get ready to learn from today's top health and wellness innovators and thought leaders on Optimal Health Radio. Now, here's your host. Hi, this is Tammy Patzer, and I'm really excited to introduce you to Dr. Mark Page. Dr. Mark Page is the author of Freedom, the Smart Parent's Guide, How to Help Your Child See a Better Life, and Learning How Patients Can Have Freedom from Daytime Glasses Using Invisalens. Now, before I tell you a little bit more about Dr. Page, I want you to know that he is a member of the American Optometric Association Contact Lenses and Sports Vision Sections and the Arizona Optometric Association. He is participating as a clinical investigator for the Food and Drug Administration in the post-approval analysis of SEBA night and day continuous wear lenses. He has been recognized as one of the top optometrists in the United States by the Consumer Research Council of America. He lives in Arizona with his wife, Gina, and their four rescue dogs and a rescue cat. And Gina is also worked as an Arizona's Vision Business Administration. And of course, over the years, her role has changed. But I want to really focus on what you're doing today, Dr. Page, because this is huge, because our kids have just returned to school. And many of them, maybe they are you know, start complaining about different issues like, hey, mom, I can't see the board. So tell me a little bit more about who you help and more about your book and about Invisalens. That is really exciting. Yes, uh, certainly, Tammy. Thank you so much for having me. But it is back to school season. And a lot of kids, it's very interesting because they don't realize that things are blurry. And they just think everyone sees that way. They've never experienced anything differently. So we do recommend that they have a professional examination. So I did a statistic recently that says like 82% of parents think a back-to-school eye exam is a good idea. Yet less than 50% of kids have an eye exam. So there's a little disconnect there. But a lot of parents will tell me that, well, they had their exam at the pediatrician. Or they had their exam from the school nurse. But that's really not an eye exam. That's checking the the vision for distance. If you think about most of our learning, is it is it far away, or no? It's reading out of a book. It's reading a, it's reading up close. And there's some other diseases that can affect our eyesight that really aren't aren't painful, and they don't affect our our clarity in the early stages. And one of them particularly is glaucoma, and it really it can strike any patient at any age. So those are things that are not being tested for or um, examined by the pediatrician or by the school nurse. So that's one of the things that we do want to encourage parents that it is a good idea. And 80% of our learning occurs through our vision. So our eyes are so important to our quality of life. Oh, my goodness. I like to say that, yeah, words can't describe what our eyes bring to life. Well, I know. I know I'm a visual, I I see myself as a visual person because I get a lot of information through my eyes. And it's funny that you bring that up about the school exams for, for eyesight. I remember being taken into a room and I was supposed to cover up, you know, my right eye and, and tell them what I saw. And then I would cover up my left eye and tell them what I saw. And that was the eye exam. I did not go to a professional optometrist until I was probably in college and I was having trouble reading. Everything got blurry and I, and my eyes ached all the time because I was doing so much close up reading. So that is interesting how people believe in it, but they don't really understand what a real eye exam is. So I think that's really important. So the book that you wrote, Freedom, the Smart Parents Guide 
on how to help your child see a better life. What inspired you to write this book? Well, the research shows in the last 40 years, the number of kids that are needing glasses to see the board, to see far away, has gone up over 60%. And I'm just realizing that my patients come in and we prescribe stronger glasses. We prescribe stronger glasses every year. It keeps getting worse, keeps getting worse. But we are also realizing when it increases like that, the eyeball itself is actually growing. It's getting longer. So the inside of the eyeball, that's what we call the retina, it starts to stretch. And when we're 10 years old, 12 years old, that's not you know that big of a deal, but it's almost like a rubber band. You stretch that out, and 20, 30, 40 years later, okay, our body's not as supple. It's not, <laughs> it, it ages. And that stretching, it, it's brittle. And that can actually crack or break or detach the retina. And also there's an increased risk of glaucoma and cataracts from uh, high prescription. So we just realized that, man, is there something we can do instead of just prescribing stronger glasses? Can we make stronger eyes? And the technology is available. So we have, it's almost like braces for the eyes that kind of stabilize the eyeball. And the side effect is you can see without glasses. So there's so much uh, of this happening and so much technology, but we're realizing that nobody knows about this. So by having this book, can we educate more parents, more teachers, that, that technology is out there to help their child, stabilize their eyesight, just let them be a kid. And some other research shows that uh, kids that wear glasses participate less in sports. And, I can believe that because you don't, yeah. you're afraid to get hit and break your glasses. How many kids have I seen with the tape on the glasses? Because the parents were like, if you break one more pair of glasses, that's it. And so yeah. they have their, their glasses taped up either the side or in the middle because they got hit right in the forehead with a ball plane. And then they start, that's how we all became nerds if we wore yeah. glasses because it was like, oh, Mom said I can't break any more glasses, and right. so, so you gonna, did. So I'm going to affect my behavior. So instead of being a natural kid and spontaneous and do a somersault and climb a tree and you know play ball with the other kids, uh, I can't do that. So having glasses is, you know, the the stigma is a lot less than it used to be. So they're they're more fashionable and they you know, they certainly they help us to reach our full potential as far as our sight and learning and things like that. But the social aspect, you know, kids are still kids. And, you know, the, the majority of kids that get bullied wear glasses and they participate less in sports. So there's things that, you know, it's, it's a little difficult because we want them to be accepted. We want to be, you know, popular. We want to be part of the group. But when they do put on the glasses, when they're six years old or eight years old, they stand out because not all the other kids wear them. So it's, you know, again, one of those things that, gosh, why can't we just change all the kids' behavior? Well, we're trying, and there's a lot of good uh, uh, systems out there and people out there that are trying to make a difference, but kids are kids. So we want to try to help. Can we, can we help them see without the glasses? So I, I want to go more back into the Invisa lens a little bit later, but I wanted to ask, since I, I bet there's a bunch of parents out there going, well, I, I took my, my child and the school nurse said, hey, vision's fine. I went to my pediatrician, vis vision's fine. What kind of symptoms or warning signs are there um, for potential vis vision problems that, that we should be watching for way before they start school. Yeah, so some of the uh, things we want to look for, well, one is uh, pretty obvious, but if the eyes are starting to turn. So if you can see that one eye points straight ahead and the other eye kind of points towards their nose, or it may point to the wall, or one eye may point up, one eye point down. So if they're not pointing together, that's something that needs to be evaluated. Now, if you, if you cover one eye and look at the eye chart, cover the other eye, look at the eye chart, they, they can, in most cases, still see okay, but their eyes are not working together. Okay. Some other symptoms, 
that they may notice is if they're kind of rubbing their eyes a lot. So they're kind of, you know, like they're sleepy or, or, or tired, or, or that's another symptom that if they're always, if they're always tired, if they're fatigued, or if they complain of headaches. So it's something that they can still see in a lot of cases, but they're, they may need glasses. There may be a prescription that's causing so much effort. So they're, as a school child, they're in, they're in the classroom and they're having to put so much effort into thinking, what does it say versus what does that mean? So if they can see clear, they, they don't have to work as hard, you know, at seeing. So they're more, their brain energy is available for, for critical thinking and not trying to, you know, make out the words, what that says. What about um, reversal of letters like D and B or things like that? Because I know that um, I've seen those tests where you can actually read read words without it. You know, if the first letter and the last letter are the same, but all the rest is gobbledygook, you can still kind of read it. But but I know um, I I think my grand I'm serious. I think my granddaughter needs some vision help because I've watched her. And I notice that she sits really close to the television. One of her eyes is a little off. Um, and I, I think that um, she is frustrated. She just started yeah. school and she is frustrated. And I think I asked my doctor and I think she gave me the answer that you did. Oh, yeah, well, the, I took her to the pediatrician and they say it's fine. Or, or yeah. the school nurse checked the eyes. And and I and I said, well, I think maybe you should take her to see an optometrist That's because it seems special. like that. But because we have so much uh, other equipment and technology that they, you just can't afford to do that in the school setting or in the pediatrician. That's not really what they're trained to do. So, so they can they can the obvious cases, of course, they'll detect. But it's the more subtle ones that you know, as a, as a young child, you, you just in that frustration, uh, this is another interesting concept or uh, research has been looked at, is that if they're farsighted and they can see everything fine, but there's so much effort to read and see up close that, that kids are more likely to become uh, delinquent. Oh. And, and as far as the uh, prison system, uh, like over 60% of the population is farsighted. And I, I don't have the exact statistics, but I thought something about the death row inmates. It's like over 80% are farsighted. So, what so is the, the theory is, well, they can't get colds. So they require so much effort. They get headaches. They get strains. So I was like, well, this is too much work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go outside. I'm going to mess around. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do other things that don't involve concentrating and reading and seeing up close because it, it's too much effort. And it's too much strain and it's, okay, I'm going to do something else. And now they're, they get themselves in a bad situation. So it's it's a very interesting uh, research there. Farsighted and nearsighted, which one is myopia? That is nearsighted. Okay. So, so, you so see up close to fine, but you can't see the board, the trouble seeing the TV, things in the distance. So that's where the kids want to be up close to the TV all the time. Okay. They don't want to sit up couch and watch because they can't see it from back there they have to be up close so with the why is the myopia such a concern today well the the big concern there is because the eye stretches oh okay and, it gets older, and so there's that, that increased risk as we get older of the detachment the the cataracts the glaucoma and there's also another component called atrophic Myopic maculopathy. Oh my goodness! Uh, <laughs> so it's what this ha what that means is because of the stretching, it it begins to almost rip or tear, and when that occurs, the blood vessels. So if you think about you know the old days, they would take someone's arm and and you know they would torture people by stretching them, and the the tendons rip, the muscles rip. It starts bleeding. So that's really what's happening inside the eye for patients. Oh and we don't we have a way to, to do anything about it. Now, if it does bleed, there is a, there is a chemical 
that can kind of stop the bleeding. It's almost like stop leaking the radiator. But in order to get it into your eye, they, they have to use a needle and give you a shot right in the eyeball. And it's pretty effective for stopping the bleeding, but the stretching and the ripping of the photoreceptors, it, it doesn't do anything for that. Oh, wow. So what? Um, it, obviously, I'm listening to this and I'm going, oh, my goodness, I didn't know all of these possibilities of, you know, you, you just think, oh, well, I need glasses. <laughs> you oh, don't really actually, think about the, the consequences of that and, and the, what it's doing uh, to your, your, the lifetime, I guess, of your eyeball, because it's right. obviously it's supposed to work for as long as you live, you know, so it really has to be functioning at a really high level all the time. So as a parent, what can a parent do to reduce this risk for their children? So there's some things they can do at home. And one of the strongest factors we've discovered is the amount of time that kids spend outside. So just just go outside and play. Uh, catch the ball, ride the bike, swim, but doing things outdoors. So they showed uh, in one of the research studies that if kids spent an average of 12 hours a week outside, and this is third graders they studied, and the one that didn't wear glasses. So if they spent 12 hours a week outside versus eight hours a week, there was a 25% less chance of becoming nearsighted just by spending that time outside. So go outside without a device such as a cell phone or a tablet, right. because that is one of the things that I think the biggest mistake I see with parents today, and I'm thankful that when my children were little, we didn't have cell phones yet. But I see people giving babies, toddlers, yeah. cell yeah. phones to play with. I, I sit at the airport and I watch people with their very small children, uh, babies, like, you know, maybe they're able to sit up and what I see them do is they hand them a cell phone and then or a kid will play games. And yeah. there's a, also a restaurant in town where um, they bring their kids in and they sit out there doing their homework and all of it, all of them have a tablet and they're playing whatever educational games on the tablet and they're not playing outside. And I look at my life and my children's life and it was like, go outside and play. That was that I remember my mother always yeah. just go outside and yeah. play, you know, like it's go outside house, yeah. and play. So, <laughs> oh. so eliminating that indoor activities like playing with a video game or watching TV or using a tablet or a phone can actually help you uh, eliminate some of these risks with your eyes. That's really important. Mm -hmm. So, tell me That's more about how Invisalens works, because you described it as being kind of like the braces for your eye. And so I'm trying yes. to imagine, well, how in the world um, would that work, especially with a little kid, you know, a, a younger uh, yeah. person? Yes. <clears throat> so I want to explain all that. But before I do, I also want to go back to uh, the screen time. Oh, okay. And one thing we've kind of found is that you need, need to reward children for their chores and then give them screen time. So if they make their bed, okay, they get five minutes of screen time. If they load the dishwasher, they get 10 minutes of screen time. If they empty the dishwasher, they get 15 minutes of screen time. So they make those little, uh, um, almost like popsicle sticks. Yes. And they, they can kind of beg and they put them into a jar and they put the different activities on there and then the and what they get rewarded for. So try and make them earn the screen time. And really, there, it should be limited, especially for the younger kids, because not only our eyesight, but the brain development. So there's a lot of things that pediatricians have studied that, you know, younger than two years old on the computer, they it is it rewiring the brain. Oh. And, and they're playing these games and they're the games are designed to get you to be involved with it. And then you try and take it away, and it's the antisocial behavior and the tantrums and, and all these other things that 
what's going to, how's this child going to react socially in the future as they get older? So it's, uh, it's really a whole different perspective there versus our eyes. So that's uh, one thing I wanted to bring that up there as well. That's really interesting. And I think that's really important because when you think about rewiring the brain and um, people wonder why th- their kids do act out in a certain way. It, it, it's almost, you know, you could call it an addiction, but really it, 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 like you said, it's actually you're interacting with a device and you have now rewired how you interact with your world. That's yeah. huge. That's really um, big information. So thanks yeah. for pointing that out. Yeah, so now with the Invisalens itself, it, it is kind of like a contact lens. It's much smaller than normal lenses, and it's, it's more of a firm plastic, so it doesn't bend or fold or go, go inside out like kind of soft lenses do. And a lot of my younger patients, their parents actually put them on their eyes for them. And some uh, kids can do themselves. They can learn over time, but we help train the parents, and then uh, they put it on, and then they go to sleep. And while they're sleeping, that's where kind of the magic happens. It's able to physically change the shape of the eye surface. So they wake up and then mom and dad help remove it. And, you know, the first day it can change like 50% of the prescription. And it's almost like all the, whenever they take it off, they always say to me, wow, I can see. <laughs> so it, uh, <laughs> it's just, it's, uh, it's, it really is almost like magic there. But it's something that does have to require special technology to measure the eye so we need to match the shape of the invisible lens retainer to the eyeball surface so that's where you know a lot of doctors it, it's a it's a big investment in the technology and it's a big investment in learning how to make sure that it works correctly and if there's if it doesn't stay in the right position or if it over treats or under treats there's there's a lot of moving parts to the retainer. And that's where, you know, I think a lot of doctors kind of, gosh, I, I'll just see another patient and sell more glasses. Wow. So it, it, it is, uh, it's, it is in catching on more doctors are interested in learning how to do it, but we got a long ways to go. So with, with the Invisalens, I, 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 you know, I'm thinking about putting it in your eye. Does it, um, can you feel it or does your eye adjust to the feeling? Um, is it something that, um, how long would you have to use this device? Is it like forever or is it like a period of time? Uh, till death do us part. Oh, really? Yes. So it's a retainer and your eye, you know, if you think about like your wrist or your, your ankle, you take your socks off at night. Oh, you got that little ring on your, on your ankle. From your socks, okay. compression, but the next morning you wake up, it's gone. Oh, I see. So, it, so it's it's creating an impression, but if we don't continue it, the impression goes away and your eyesight fades back to blurry again. So what? But about, it does. Oh, go ahead. Just asked earlier too about there is some sensation. So there's a there's a lens on your eye, and it does have some motion, so you can feel it, but it's not painful. But you put it on and then you go to bed. Right. So you close your eyes and you're going to sleep. So you don't really feel it while you're sleeping. So what about for older people? Is this something that someone, you know, older than, than a kid like me, would that be somebody, would I be a candidate for something along this lines? Um, and, and I'll just say, you know, I'm over 50. <laughs> yes. Yeah. One of my patients is 74 years old. Okay. And she, she was one of my first patients. We did that about 13 years ago. And he's nearsighted, so she can see up close and read and do her makeup and everything without glasses on. But you can't, you know, drive or watch TV or things like that. So as we get older, there is a little bit of a challenge when we treat both eyes. Okay, now the distance is amazing. She sees so clear, but now she can't, she can't see her phone. She can't see to put her makeup on in the morning. So we said, well, why don't we just try it in one eye? So one eye is clear for driving in the distance. The other eye is clear for reading and up close. So she only wears it in one eye. And that's been working very successful for us. Oh, 
So this is almost like it, it's a way to, well, temporarily heal your eyes uh, so that you can see just like like what naturally one of my eyes is stronger than the other and i think yes. that's what i i compensate when i drive i think i must use the the strong eye you know for distance and the other one for close because i can still read little type but i i can i can drive but what happens is at night i can't see yeah and her eyes change over time, so that just uh, the aging process, things kind of get stiff inside there, and that's where people, a lot of people, it does get more difficult to read the fine print. The menu, you know, filling out the, the okay, signing the check, uh, what's, <laughs> what's the bill here? What am I signing? Or they're, you know, you see everybody trying to stretch their arms all the way out. <laughs> so I tell patients, oh, we have the arm stretcher in the back room, let's... Uh, <laughs> Pull your arms up so you can see that, uh, see your phone better. But with the Invisalens, we can, we, it's kind of the opposite of kids. So the lens is designed where, because when we're nearsighted, we, we can't see far away. Our eye is too long. So the Invisalens kind of almost physically shortens the eye. But when we can't read, we can't see our phone. It's almost like the eye is too short. So the Invisalens can almost make the surface of the eye increase so it changes the the point of focus to the right position this is just phenomenal so how long has the invisalens been available well we've been you know testing it for over 20 years and uh with with the invisalens in the last couple of years we've also realized that with, with kids, their eyes, you know, keep getting worse and worse. And sometimes it would get worse even when we wore the, the traditional uh, treatment. So we've discovered now if we adjust the size of the treatment zone, that we have a better ability to stabilize the prescription. So that's when we developed the Invisalens. And we've been doing that probably for the last three to four years now. But for about 20 years, we've actually been reshaping the eye. But recently, we've kind of discovered more science of what's necessary to stabilize it. Wow, I'm just, I'm just like, wow, this is so cool. So, so, doctor, tell me if somebody wants to get more information, where can they go? So, for the Invisalens therapy, they can go to Invisalens.com, and if they are interested in the book. And would like to see if there's some other strategies and advice in there for helping their, their kids. That's the smartparentsguide.com. And if you're in Arizona in the Phoenix area, uh, arizonasvision.com is my practice uh, website there. Okay, so invisalens.com, that's L E N S, the invisalens. The smartparentsguide.com. And what was your practice website again, please? Arizona's Vision. Arizona's Vision. Okay, great. Yeah. Arizona with an S, vision.com. Wow. Well, I really appreciate all of this information because, number one, I learned a lot about eye care and about some misconceptions that I didn't really realize because, and, and I'm guilty, I'm one of those parents that I was relying on the schools to test my kids' eyes because I yeah. didn't understand that there was a true difference in that. So now I'm feeling guilty <laughs> about the <laughs> fact that I didn't know. So now I feel really good about the fact that we have educated parents about the difference about you need to take your child to a real eye doctor, to an optometrist. Don't rely on the school nurse or on any of the, the things that you get through the school because all they're doing is, is trying to check to see if maybe there's something wrong, but they're not actually examining the eye. And, and as Dr. Page pointed out, if we can catch these things when our children are young, then we can grow up and have healthy eyesight 
as adults because we we need our eyes forever and and that's really important and uh, the book i i love this idea that you have this book available the smart parents guide because so many parents they need the answers and um to so that they can be better parents and protect the health of their children so dr page thank you so much for all of the great information You're so welcome. Thank you so much for having me. This is Tammy Patzer. Go make it a beautiful day. You've been listening to today's top health and wellness innovators and thought leaders on Optimal Health Radio. To get more solid health and wellness information, visit OptimalHealthRadio.com. 